if you're a musket shooter, then there's a certain skill that you have to master, and it is making your own cord, making your own match for your musket. There are many ways to do this, but I think that the most simple way is the same way actually it, as it was done in the 17th century, in the days of the 30 years war. Let me show you how I make my matches for my musket. One of the earliest mention of how to make a slow match can be found in a little treatise, little booklet. This remarkably successful manual became quite popular in the 16th century and was written by an experienced soldier, Gian Battista della Valle. It was first published in Napoli in 1521, at least this is the first uh, issue that we know about, and it is a collection of the, of the military art of the early 16th century. It says the following about making the slow match. Take the cord and boil it with lye, add a little saltpeter, and thirdly, leave it to dry. Just know that, that the cord must be beaten on a stone with a wooden mallet and let it dry in the shade. Lye was an alkaline solution of lye soap. This contained a lot of sodium carbonate and also potassium. The saltpeter was the same saltpeter that was used for making black powder. And the rope could be made from hemp, could be made from linen or from cotton. There's another method described in Hans Jakob Christoph von Grimmershausen's book titled The Adventurous Simplicissimus. This book is a story about, a fictional story about a musketeer who is serving in the Thirty Years' War. And actually Grimmershausen served in the Thirty Years' War on the Catholic side, so he pretty much knew what he's talking about. This is how he described how to make a cord. The cord was boiled in water containing ashes. The cord was then rinsed in water and it was ready for use. This process is called bucking. Bucking frees the fibers of the material from lignin. Lignin is not good for us because it creates ashes. And ashes can fall from the smoldering match into the open pan and they can fire the basket before we want it to. And this is quite dangerous. First get a steel pot and put a rug in it. Now fill the rug with ashes. Fill the pot completely with water. Let it stay like this for 10 minutes. Now remove the ashes. The remaining liquid will be a 5% potash solution. Submerge your quartz completely into the solution. Now start heating, but keep the temperature just at the boiling point. Leave it there for an hour. After an hour, your solution will be dark brown. Now it is time to properly clean your cords with fresh water. Repeat this until the water becomes completely clear.
The last step is to add some vinegar to neutralize the potash. Now squeeze the remaining water out of your cords. Dry your cords in horizontal position. If you did your job well, it will smolder hot without sparks. Grimmeshausen also shared the most important qualities we require from the match. First of all, he said it is never consumed. Huh. Second, it is waterproof. Third, it burns hot without the ashes. Grimmeshausen also knew the secret recipe how to make a match cord that does not smell by burning. This was quite important because the smell of the burning match could uncover your position in case of an ambush. He also knew the secret recipe for making a completely waterproof match. Now, these information are actually lost. He just states that he knows it, but unfortunately the information is not shared in the book. These qualities are also important for us modern time shooters as well. First of all, the match must not burn too fast. My match is burning 20-25 cm an hour, which is quite good. The match should not spark. If you add too much saltpeter to the solvent, then it will spark at the end, which is not good for us because it can ignite the priming powder and that's dangerous. Also, it must be some kind of waterproof. You cannot make it completely waterproof, but in damp weather it must work also. The quality of the material is important as well, because while burning, we want to have a very sharp edge that can hit the center of the pan. If it is brush-like, it is not good, of course. The temperature is also important. To ignite the priming powder, we have to reach around 270-300 Celsius, which is quite a lot. Grimmelshausen was very kind to share some information about the creative use of the match as well. First, you can hang your enemies. Second, you can use it to measure time. This is, it is important to know that my match burns 20-25 cm an hour. And third, you can torture your enemies. Now, here is a little story that he shares in his book. Meanwhile, the other soldiers had the remaining four peasants to deal with. These they bound, hands and feet together, over a fallen tree in such wise that their backsides, saving your presence, were uppermost. Then they stripped off their breeches and took some yards of their mesh string and made knots in it and fiddled them therewith so mercilessly that the blood ran. So they cried out lamentably, but that was sport for soldiers who ceased not to sew away till skin and flesh were clean sewn of the bones. Very friendly, isn't it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. You've been watching the Capembo YouTube channel. If you wish to support us, you know how to do it. You can do it through Patreon or by buying our products. All the links are below in the description. Stay tuned for more information and the later video about this beautiful 17th century musket. Until next time, stay cool and keep your powder dry.